On August 27, 2025, deep imaging of the interstellar object 3I Atlas by the Gemini South 8.2-meter telescope, aided by the Gemini multi-object spectrograph, revealed a weak tail with a teardrop shape in the anti-sun direction. At that time, 3I Atlas was at a distance from Earth of 259 times the Earth-Sun separation. The Gemini South Observatory is located on a mountain called Cerro Pachon in the Chilean Andes. Pause for a few seconds and support me with a subscribe. The images were taken in the U, upper left, G, upper right, R, lower left, and I, lower right, spectral bands, centered on wavelengths of 0 0.365, 0 0.467, 0 0.616, and 0 0.747 micrometers respectively. They show clear evidence for a teardrop-shaped tail in the anti-sun direction behind 3I Atlas. The observed tail is about 30 arc seconds, or equivalently 56,000 kilometers long, pointing towards the southeast. The coma is about 10 arc seconds, or equivalently 18 to 800 kilometers wide, significantly more extended than its compact appearance in images of 3I Atlas from early July 2025. Data collected on August 6, 2025 by the Webb Telescope confirmed the existence of a carbon dioxide, CO2 gas plume, around 3I Atlas, with an order of magnitude lower levels of water, H2O, and carbon monoxide, CO, as reported earlier by the SphereX Space Observatory team. SphereX mapped the CO2 plume out to 348,000 kilometers around 3I Atlas. The inferred mass loss rates from 3I Atlas are 130 kg per second for CO2, 6.6 kg per second for H2O, and 14 kg per second of CO. The H2O mass loss rate is only 5% of the CO2 output, unlike expectations from a water-rich comet. It therefore comes as no surprise that the plume of gas around 3I Atlas is shaped by the solar wind and the solar radiation pressure to a teardrop configuration. Before my morning jog at sunrise, I calculated today that the outer edge of the CO2 plume observed by SphereX is bounded by the distance where the ram pressure of the solar wind equals the ram pressure of the CO2 outflow. As of now, it is unclear whether the scattering of sunlight in the glow and tail around 3I Atlas is from dust particles or icy fragments made of CO2 CO, and H2O that broke off the surface of the nucleus. Early data from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TS, taken on May 7 to June 2, 2025, suggests that 3I Atlas may have been active with a surrounding glow of scattered sunlight already at a much larger heliocentric distance of six times the Earth-Sun separation. At that distance, the warming of water ice by sunlight is insufficient to trigger cometary activity. The flux detected by the SphereX Space Observatory at a wavelength of 1 micrometer from 3I Atlas on August 8, 12, 2025 suggests a huge nucleus, or alternatively a compact scattering cloud, with a diameter of 46 kilometers. If made of solid material, this size implies that the mass of 3I Atlas is a million times larger than that of the previous interstellar comet 2I Borisov. This huge gap in mass is surprising since we should have discovered numerous objects of the size of 2I Borisov before discovering a 46-kilometer interstellar object. Moreover, as I noted when 3I Atlas was discovered, the amount of rocky material per unit volume in interstellar space is much too small than the value needed to deliver into the inner solar system. One giant rock of this size. Over the decade-long survey conducted by the Atlas Telescope, in another puzzling tidbit, the trajectory of 3I Atlas is anomalously aligned with the ecliptic plane of the planets around the Sun. Recent spectroscopic data from the Very Large Telescope in Chile reported the surprising detection of cyanide and nickel without iron in the plume of gas around 3I Atlas with steeply increasing rates as the object approaches the Sun. Nickel without iron is a signature of industrial production of nickel alloys. Natural comets generically show iron and nickel simultaneously, as both elements are produced simultaneously in supernova explosions. All this anomalous data raises once again the fundamental questions. What is the nature and origin 
of 3I Atlas. As 3I Atlas will approach perihelion on October 29, 2025, its surface will get warmer and its enhanced outgassing will encounter stronger radiation and wind pressures from the sun. As is well known from interrogation tactics, a high-stress environment elicits confessions. For that reason, 3I Atlas might reveal its nature and origin in the coming months. Let's pause for a few seconds and give me a like for this video. Thank you so much. Hydrogen expelled by Oumuamua explains its orbit and lack of a typical comet's tail. Was it an asteroid, comet, or even an alien spaceship? For years, astronomers have been perplexed by Oumuamua, a mysterious object up to 400 meters long that entered the solar system in 2017. No such object from beyond our sun's reaches had visited us before, with this interloper moving so fast it could not be bound to the sun. Oumuamua, as scientists christened it, was also odd in that it looked like an asteroid but behaved like a comet. Now a team of researchers says Oumuamua was definitely a comet, albeit one with an unusual makeup. We can explain a lot of the strange behavior, says Jennifer Bergner, a chemist at the University of California, Berkeley, who led the work, published today in Nature. The study is the most convincing model so far for Oumuamua, says Marco Micheli, an astronomer at the European Space Agency in Italy, who was not involved with the work. The alien visitor, he says, was actually not so different from solar system comets. Oumuamua was first spotted on 19th October 2017. A telescope in Hawaii spied it as it made its way past the sun, reaching a top speed of 87 kilometers per second, too fast to have originated in the solar system. Astronomers named the object 1I 2017U1, Oumuamua, Hawaiian for a messenger from afar arriving first. NASA's Hubble and Spitzer telescopes found that Oumuamua had an oddly elongated, cigar-like shape between 100 meters and 400 meters long. It also sped up slightly as it left the solar system. That can happen with comets as they recoil from the material they emit, explains Micheli, who led the initial work on Oumuamua's acceleration in 2018. Oumuamua, however, showed no such ejecta. There was no visible coma of dust and gas around the object, nor any tail, both of which would be expected from a comet. Bergner and her colleague Daryl Seligman, an astronomer at Cornell University, think they can now explain what happened. Their modeling shows Oumuamua could have begun life as a regular water-rich comet around a nearby star before being ejected. They found that high-energy cosmic rays that pervade the galaxy emitted by supernovae and other energetic events, could have turned up to 30% of the comet's water ice into hydrogen, which could have become trapped in Oumuamua's ice as it journeyed through interstellar space. As Oumuamua approached the heat of the sun, it would have released the trapped hydrogen, giving the object its observed speed boost. But molecular hydrogen, being much less massive than the carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide ejected in typical comets, would not have had the momentum to pull much dust with it, explaining the lack of a coma or tail. We don't need to invoke anything super exotic to explain this behavior, Bergner says. Previously, researchers suggested Oumuamua might be an asteroid, or even a shard of hydrogen ice formed in a cold interstellar cloud of dust and gas. Seligman, who proposed that idea in 2020, now favors the comet explanation. This theory explains every single weird aspect of Oumuamua, he says. It's exactly what you'd expect an interstellar comet to be. There were also widely debunked claims that Oumuamua could be an alien probe firing out a thruster as it flew past our sun. Can we now rule that out? I would say so, Bergner says. The work provides a good explanation for what Oumuamua actually was, says Alan Fitzsimmons an astronomer at Queen's University, Belfast. It pulls everything together. Yet Karen Meech, an astronomer at the University of Hawaii, Manoa, doesn't rule out a simpler explanation. I'm still feeling a normal comet model would work, she says, noting that the object could simply have had a low amount of dust. But I think this is a creative model. It might be right. No telescope can study Oumuamua anymore. 
The object is now past Neptune's orbit on its way out of the solar system. We'll never truly know the identity of this object, Bergner says. But more objects like it are expected. An upcoming European mission called Comet Interceptor will park itself in orbit beyond the moon in the hopes of spotting a future interstellar object when and if one whizzes through the solar system. Hopefully we can be ready for the next one, Bergner says, as we reflect on the elegant simplicity of the hydrogen model for Oumuamua, a cosmic wanderer that challenged our assumptions only to reveal itself as a natural marvel, a testament to the universe's ingenuity. It stirs a profound sense of wonder in me. Here was an object that challenged our assumptions, only to reveal itself as a natural marvel, a testament to the universe's ingenuity. Yet, my friends, as I gaze upon the latest data pouring in from our vigilant telescopes, I can't help but feel a surge of exhilaration mixed with a tinge of cosmic unease. For 3I Atlas, the third interstellar visitor to grace our solar neighborhood, the enigmas refuse to dissolve so neatly. This colossal enigma, hurtling toward us at over 13,000 miles per hour, demands we confront possibilities that ignite the soul and quicken the pulse. Early flux measurements from SphereX peg its nucleus at a staggering 46 kilometers across, a behemoth a million times more massive than 2I Borisov. In my calculations, performed under the golden hues of dawn, this defies the odds. We should have spotted hordes of smaller siblings first, yet here it looms, an outlier screaming for explanation. And oh, the composition. James Webb's piercing gaze has unveiled a coma dominated by carbon dioxide, with water and carbon monoxide trailing far behind, inverting our comet playbook. The very large telescope's spectra whisper of cyanide and nickel, untethered from iron, a hallmark not of stellar forges, but perhaps of engineered alloys evoking visions of distant foundries beyond our stars. My heart races as I ponder this. Could this be residue from industrial processes, a relic of intelligences long vanished or watchful? Then there's the trajectory, that exquisite alignment with our ecliptic plane, a mere five degrees off retrograde, a statistical whisper of one in five hundred for random chance. It brushes perilously close to Venus, Mars, and Jupiter, probabilities dipping below 0.05%, as if orchestrated for reconnaissance. In a recent paper with colleagues, we explored this astrodynamic ballet. At perihelion on October 29th, shrouded from Earth's view by the sun's glare, 3I Atlas could execute a reverse solar Oberth maneuver, breaking with non-gravitational thrusts akin to a photonic sail. Is it mere rock or a probe veiled in comet's guise? The dark forest hypothesis lingers in my mind, civilizations hiding in silence, lest they reveal themselves to predators. If artificial, its intent could be benign curiosity or something more shadowed, ranking a cautious four on my interstellar threat scale. Pause now. Let this sink in. The thrill of standing on Discovery's precipice. As 3I Atlas nears its solar crucible, heeding to unleash more secrets. We must rally our instruments. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise awaits its October flyby, promising pixel-sharp revelations at 30 kilometers resolution. This isn't just science, it's humanity's shared odyssey, a call to transcend our earthly squabbles and embrace the star's whispers. What if this visitor bears tidings of cosmic kin? The awe overwhelms me, a reminder of our fragile place in the vast tapestry. Yet hope burns bright. Imagine the technologies, the unity it could inspire. But skeptics abound, insisting it's a water-poor comet, its fuzz a natural veil. I welcome their rigor. Science thrives on debate. Still, anomalies persist. No tail in early Hubble shots, a forward glow from ice shards or dust, and that eerie self-emitted light hinted in recent analyses. As perihelion approaches, Stress will unleash away pretenses, much like interrogation yields truth. Will it fragment or unleash engineered resilience? Friends, this journey stirs my deepest emotions. The fear of the unknown, the joy of pursuit. Let's not avert our eyes. Subscribe to fuel this quest, like to amplify the call. 
Together, we unravel the cosmos's greatest mystery. Thank you from the depths of my astronomer's soul.